Thanksgiving is just around the corner and we're thankful for you. What's up makers, Nate Javier here and uh, thank you so much for joining us. We're about two weeks away from Thanksgiving. It's kind of crazy how the year's going by fast and uh, thank you so much for your support and uh, I know you probably you probably like my shirt, right? Just maybe coming soon and ask me for a magic trick, just saying. Uh, anyway, uh, we all have those family celebrations or we're doing Friendsgiving, but Sometimes we want to do something a little bit different and maybe we want to stick out a little It'd be better than that cheesy uncle that we all have. Anyway, uh, so today we want to actually share with you not one not two but three three full uh, Effects that you can do to uh, kind of wow your family. They're quick. They're simple and uh, shouldn't take any practice at all So with that, uh, let's begin so we have a full deck of cards here. David, would you mind choosing a card? Since the people at home do not have hands that can go through the screen. Okay, mesmerize it, don't let me see. All right, whenever you're ready, go ahead and place it back wherever you want. Anywhere at all, all the way. Good. All right, I'll give it a quick cut. Now, I'm gonna try to figure out what your card is. No. Unfortunately, the cards aren't telling me anything. Let's, uh, maybe if I mix up the order just a little bit. David, is your card the five of spades? Yeah. 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 So vinaigrette was one of my favorite uh, little effects to do. It's completely ridiculous and it is something that will fool so many people and it takes almost no effort. Almost. You have to do a little bit. Alright, so here's the close up for vinaigrette. Uh, vinaigrette was a fun little effect uh, starting with the idea of oil and water. I know this principle has been used in a few other things by a few other magicians, but because it's so commonplace, I can't really uh, can't really place it. <laughs> so you start with a normal deck. It's all jumbled up, however they wish. Um, but there is a little bit of setup that goes into vinaigrette, um, and it goes like this: We need to separate the reds and the blacks. So we're going to start there and. So, like I said, they're going to be separated out into all the red cards and all the black cards. So typically this setup is kind of used for an oil and water routine because uh, sometimes oil doesn't mix with water and uh, the premise goes like that. However, in this case, we're going to end up mixing these together. Uh, much like a vinaigrette. <laughs> uh, so, here's your setup. You have one stack of one color on top of the other stack, and you're ready to go. This should be an opener uh, because you have to have some setups. You can run to the bathroom and separate the reds and blacks. Uh, you can, if you're good at culling cards, then this would be the time to do it. If you don't know what a cull is, don't worry, it's just a deep place in your mind. So uh, with this setup, let me show you what Vanagrat looks like face up. So if you could see through the cards, this is what's going to go through. So you, you ask them to choose a card and you only thumb off the top half because, huh, look at that, all the red cards are here. So let's say they choose the uh, Nine of Diamonds. You don't know this. You as the magician won't know this. As they're looking at it, showing it around, kick over the top half. If you put a giant clamp on this, they're never gonna be able to utilize it. They won't be able to put cards in, things like that. So put a giant clamp on that top half and spread out the bottom. And given this, their only choice is to put that one off color card with the opposite color. And so you square up and be like, oh, okay, excellent. 
Mind you, this is all done face down, but we're gonna do this face up. So this is what it looks like. Currently, in the midst of it all, you have their card sticking out like a sore thumb in the black pile in this case. But of course you feign this. You you kind of press the card so they don't see it. Act like you're looking around for it. You're like, oh, maybe it's this one. No, it can't be that. In the meantime, you're just memorizing. Okay, it's nine of diamonds, nine of diamonds, nine of diamonds. You can even, if you want, before looking at it, give it a quick cut, because a cut doesn't actually change in the order. It just sets it off to the side. So look, the slug of black cards is now in the center there's that nine of diamonds. So after looking through, acting like you can't see it, you don't know which one it is, uh, what I like to do, and you saw in the performance, is I actually gave it a quick shuffle. So this ruins your stack. Why would you want to ruin the stack, you may ask? Really easy. So you can actually spread these out, completely mixed up, knowing what their card is. You could even have them shuffle it if you want. So I have this big old mess, trying to look through, look for their card. In actuality, I could probably just gather these up after kind of showing off a mixed deck. So after looking through, you look them square in the eye and ask them by pulling out their card and just kind of set it up top, showing it away. All right, Joe, what card were you thinking of? And when they say nine of diamonds and you flip that puppy over, oh, they're gonna be done for. All right, some quick notes on vinaigrette. Look, it's a great opener trick. If you are sitting at your table with whomever you are eating Thanksgiving food with, use this as an opener because it does take a little bit of setup. All you have to do, remember, is separate red and black cards. But because you do need to set up, run to the bathroom, separate the cards real quick, come back and be like, oh, you know what? I learned a new card trick and then do this. Uh, this is definitely not something to do later on uh, after people have been shoveling cards forever, unless you know how to cold cards or you know how to set up a deck right in front of everyone. Uh, but this is definitely an opening effect because it gets them going and they're like, wait, how does he know or she know or how do they know and it gets crazy. Uh, definitely don't let anybody see the faces until you're done. Uh, otherwise it's completely ruined and it looks really lame. But other than that, let us know in the comments below, like what do you think of vinaigrette? All right, Nate. We're gonna play a game I like to call 52 card pickup. It's not a joke, it's a real thing, all right. Wonderful. Okay. Now, Nate, you're gonna be the magician this time. Ironic. I want you to pick up or point to one card, just touch it, and without showing it, you're gonna just give it to me, okay? But I want you to pick the nine of hearts. The nine of hearts. The nine of hearts. Mm -hmm. Which one? That one? This one. That one. Got it. Alright, that's pretty good. Okay. Well he, well, he is a magician, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like the magician to now pick the five of spades. That's pretty good as well. Okay, so you've picked two cards. Let me see if I can be the magician now. Because you're, you're, pretty, you're pretty good at it already, right? So, I mean, come on. Like, pick the, I'm going to pick the five of spades just out of a 52 card pickup. Now I'm going to pick up the, uh, I'll pick up the seven of spades. Nay, do you remember what cards uh, we picked? Or you uh, picked? Uh, no. Alright, so, well, first you pick Nine of Hearts. Then you pick the Five of Spades. And I picked the Seven of Spades. And that's three cards out of 52 pickup. What's up, makers? So, we're going to be going through the tutorial of what I affectionately call the 52 card pickup with these 52 Dixie cards. Sorry, they call the jazz stripes. All right, anyways, they're beautiful cards. Thank you to Nick Earl.
Alright, so, for this effect that I affectionately call 52 card pickup, the secret is staying one ahead. And what I mean by that is, well, you're going to be, you're going to know information one ahead of other people. And how that works for this effect is, I'm going to be using the third card from the bottom, in that case this is the Ace of Diamonds, and I'll know where that is in the deck. So when I present it, as you saw in the effect, I'm just keeping track of where the third card from the bottom is when, I miss, when I'm mixing all of these up. You know where it is? Right there. So when I have the spectator pick, I know where the Ace of Diamonds is, so I'm going to miscall that, or I'm going to actually accurately call that. So pick the Ace of Diamonds. Let's say they pick this, they go all the way around and they pick this. And you, you'll miss call this card, like, great, you did, you did awesome, man, you're, you're actually a magician. You pick the Ace of Diamonds. Now pick the Eight of Hearts. But why would I do that? That's because they just picked the Eight of Hearts. So, we'll go, they'll go around again thinking they're going to pick the Eight of Hearts, when in reality it's right here. They'll pick up a card. Awesome. They give it to you, face down, they, nobody sees it but you. You'll just, you'll miscall that card as well and say, awesome man, you're, you, you should be the magician, not me. And in all reality, yeah, they picked the Eight of Hearts, but they also picked the Queen of Diamonds. And you can do this three, four times. I prefer to I prefer to do two, just to kind of keep it nice and simple and short. And say you you've done two uh, this time, but now I'll do now I'll do one. This time I'll pick the Queen of Diamonds. I'll pick this, miss calling this to be the Queen of Diamonds, putting it together, and asking them what in what order did we call the cards? Ace of Diamonds, the Eight of Hearts and the Queen of Diamonds. And that way you've stayed one ahead in information to the spectator. And they think that they've randomly chosen a card out of a pile of face down mixed up cards. And that's 52 card pickup. So you've learned, you've learned what we call 52 pickup. Uh, again, it could, be, it could be the third card, that's what I like to do. It could be the fourth or fifth card from the bottom. It really just depends on your preference. Uh, to <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's staying in. And again, um, there, there are a couple ways you can do it. My presentation uh, outside was I you know, riffled the cards out, I made it super messy, just keeping track of the third card, which happens to be this right here. But we can also square them up and present them in a different way. You'll spread the cards out in a fairly straight line, just keeping track of where the third card is, and they'll have them, have them pick, you know, this card, this card, and then your third card, which you'll be picking, right here. Remember, staying one ahead. And a couple tips as to how, as how to not make things obvious. Uh, in this, remember, your, your spectator is initially, uh, in, for all intents and purposes, becoming the magician, right? So have have a conversation with them. You know, be very convinced that, wow, you really actually, you picked the Ace of Hearts and then kind of get that pattern going. Get, make sure, like, you're making eye contact because when you're, when you're one ahead, you don't actually, of course, you actually, of course, you don't have the card that they have. So this gives you a little bit of time to kind of just finger through, like, oh, good card. You, know, you just, you don't want to, you don't want to give it away that they've given you the card that you actually called previously. Uh, those, are the, those are the tips for the 52 card pickup. Hope you enjoy. Try them out on your friends. Freak them out. So I walked into this joint, right? And uh, this fella comes up to me, watching my magic tricks, grabs the deck out of my hands while I'm in the middle of showing off. And uh, he has the audacity to grab them and just start mixing them up, face up face down all over the place. It was the worst it could be. And he goes, all right, Mr. Magic, if that is your real name, I bet you can't fix all those cards. And he showed me, like, why are there cards, you know, normal way, face to back, there's some back to face, heck, there's like more face to, like, it's, who ever heard of a mess this bad? Except for me, because I was in that situation. But I said, okay, sir, because I'm such a nice guy, I'm gonna make him better. Look, back to, back to back, who does that? Who does that? So all I did was uh, take the cards, give them a quick dribble and a snap. And all the cards 
righted themselves. Ah. All right, the Irish Shuffle. This is such a classic. Uh, some people call it the Texas Shuffle, and it goes along with the Triumph sequence. Uh, if you want to look into it more, definitely look at it. Uh, look it up. Uh, the Triumph is one of my favorites. This is a really simple one you can do anywhere. Some people call it the Slop Shuffle. Uh, for this, I'm going to show you with the Black Cherry Casino cards. These feel amazing. They handle incredibly and they are black, like my heart. Uh, so let's check it out. Slop shuffle, super easy. All right, so here's the Irish shuffle. This is the easiest thing. If you know how to cut cards, even if it's just tabling it, you're good. And if you can move your wrist, either one back and forth, you're golden. Uh, essentially, this is a triumph for Dean. As you go through the cards, once they're all mixed up, they correct themselves. It goes like this. Push off a packet, and you want to keep it kind of messy. Then, choose one of your wrists. For me, I prefer to turn over the wrist that's receiving the cards, instead of the, card, the wrist that's giving cards, because gravity's not always our best friend. So all I have to do is turn this over, push off about the same amount of cards, turn it over and do the same. Essentially what's happening is, as we go through this process, and you can see in the performance video, this is a time to tell a story, uh, just because of how messy that is. But the crazy part is, in reality, this is what it looks like. Half pack is coming in face down, the other pack is gonna be face up. So already, your work's half done. And all you have to do is turn it over at that break. But Nate, how come it looks so confusing and so convincing? Number one, as you're going through the packets, you don't keep them square. Because if you kept them square and nice and neat, you might as well just turn that over, turn that over, turn that over. But that's not convincing to anyone. Additionally, if you turn both sides over, you can see that there's an issue doing this because nothing gets done which is why you turn your wrist over. Now in the performance I say, oh yeah, look, you have cards back to face. Uh, if you have worn cards, so do you see that gap right there? That's where the backs are touching, and that's where you want to cut off and then square up. But in a performance you say, oh yeah, look, there's some cards that are uh, face to back, and then you come to the top half, back to face, and then right there at that gap, that nice little gap that you have in your deck, if it's, especially if it's worn, you can show there's back to back, and then you just place your hands back together. And at that point, all the work's done. All the cards are back together. So again, it's really easy, as long as you can turn over your hand back and forth, one hand. Uh, that's the major tip on this one. Don't do both, or else it just, there's no point to it. Uh, the other thing is, you wanna be telling the story while you're at it, because then, People understand that it looks really mixed up and especially if you make it sloppy and unkempt and not a nice neat stack, it helps them lose it and they don't understand what's going on. Other than that, we hope you have fun with this. This was the Irish Shuffle. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, just for that, please let us know down in the comments below what you thought of this video or what you've used. Uh, like I said, Thanksgiving is not too far away and we thought we'd give you a little bit of time to uh, practice before you get to fool everybody else. If you're not part of our makers community yet, two options for you. Well, one you should definitely do and the other you should do too. Hit the subscribe button just below us right there and then there's also a bell button uh, so you know when we post our next video. And if you haven't checked it out, we've just launched a Patreon so if you want to be a bigger part of the community and have some say in what we do and what you want to see, uh, let us know and uh, become a patron. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time.